uh, to order. Senator Langford, uh, you are uh, recognized uh, for your questions. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much for this. Witnesses, thank you. Uh, I appreciate your engagement. Uh, we're trying to all fill in blanks, and uh, none of you have all the answers on this. We're not expecting this panel to be able to cover everything on it, but I do appreciate the gaps that you're helping us fill uh, as we go through this conversation together. Ms. Uh, Spislova, I want to ask you a couple of questions about the IC. I I've read through some of the sensitive information that was sent out to law enforcement in advance of January the 6th. Help me understand someone that's getting that report. Obviously, many of these folks that are getting the report from Capitol Police and others, Sergeant at Arms, they get reports like this similar every day. If I look at the, the reports prior to January the 6th that are coming out from intelligence, I have a hard time looking at it and getting the context of how is this different than normal. So help me understand for those reports, for someone who's reading these reports every day, how would they understand the context of what you're seeing or what the folks are seeing on the ground that's different than what they had seen three months before, six months before, a year before? Yes, sir. That is, um, that is a great question, and that is one that we are now reassessing. It was our view. Again, when I prepared for this hearing and I looked at all of the work that we had done, um, specifically talking about the extremists that would be motivated by the dissatisfaction with the election results and also unhappy with some of the restrictions related to COVID-19. Um, the, the reports are quite good. They are well written. They seem to summarize pretty succinctly. I mean, I look at them and I'm proud of the team, which has produced uh, twice as many reports on domestic terrorism this last year as they did the year before. But to your point, it might be hard to see that trend over time in, um, in the noise. So looking backwards from you know, now, what didn't happen, right? We are examining, should there be different types of um, reports? Should we use some of the tools that DHS has, such as the National Terrorism Advisory System? We have restarted the Counterterrorism Advisory Board, which was uh, occurring monthly under the previous administration and had fallen off for a variety of reasons the last few years. We've restarted that. Uh, Secretary Mayorkas is challenging us all to do a better job when it comes to combating terrorism, domestic terrorism. So I guess that's a long way, sir, of saying we are taking a look at our the reports that we have done, we will be engaging very directly with all of our stakeholders, asking them what we could do better, asking them how they might um, better receive the information. Should we put it in a different format? Is there some way we should remind them that this is an alert? And it, it is hard, candidly, with the volume of information that we all receive sure. daily. Sure. You're, you're getting a tremendous amount, and that information continues to be able to flow. But when I look at the reports and look at even the bottom line up front that's at the beginning of it, it all seems very standard to me. Mm -hmm. There doesn't seem to be an elevated risk. Now, there's some details that come afterwards that if you're reading through it, you could then elevate it. And I'm, as you've heard, some members on this committee and others in the media have pulled out specific statements buried in a report and pulled it out and said, well, how could you have missed this? Right. But in the bottom line up front, it looks very standard. Uh, here, are the, here are the risks. Here are the things that we're, that we're seeing. Uh, there doesn't seem to be something that would say, hey, this is higher than normal. Mm -hmm. it, if I can use the intel term, it seems to be chatter. Uh, it, even in the report itself, it identifies multiple places. This was one person on a social media site, and they had one comment uh, that they made on it. That would make someone think this is one person out there saying this, this doesn't look like a movement. Uh, that's happening. So if that was accurate uh, to say we're, we're hearing some chatter on that, there has to be some way to be able to note that for the future, to be able to say elevated more, more so than normal, higher than it was a week ago, some way to be able to show a trend line, whether it's bottom line up front all the way through to say it's increasing uh, in awareness on this. No, uh, sorry. And that is, that is something that is fixable. I, I would tell you my challenge from serving on the Intel Committee is seeing different reports that come through that are so carefully scripted they say nothing. Uh, so getting as many pieces of raw information as possible, which are in some of these reports, but then to also make sure that the assessments and the statements are very, very clear will help everyone in the process. Uh, it, we, we do reach moments where it becomes so politicized that we've got to be able to turn down the volume of that particular word that at the end of it they don't say anything. 
General, can I ask you a question on this as well? For any of the operations that Washington, D.C. has or that you know of for other National Guard members, in any operation that you're going to be around, and you had obviously soldiers that were involved uh, scattered around uh, the city helping with traffic duties and such uh, during the day, do you get the threat assessments in advance the same as what Capitol Police, Metro Police would get? Because obviously you're assisting Metro Police. So would you get the same threat assessments that they get as they're leading up to the event so that you would have that for that event as well? Yes, uh, Senator, we do receive finished intelligence products. Okay. Are those helpful to you? They are. Good. Is there anything that you're missing when you go through those reports that you wish was there? No, sir. Yeah. We, we would all love to see 2020 into the future. Uh, I get that uh, completely. Um, you, you've made several comments through the course of the day today uh, that I've noted and then in your statement itself. Uh, where you stated the Secretary of Army's January 5th letter withheld authority from me to employ the quick reaction force. Now, we've talked about that, and several of us have brought it up. Uh, I, I want to ask a question for the folks that were actually on traffic duty and such that were helping out that day and standing side by side with Metro Police to help them. Were those folks uh, armed with uh, less lethal implements to be able to help in case there was a riot situation or an unruly crowd? Could they have engaged from where they were with less than lethal force? So, so they weren't equipped with less than lethal, but they were equipped with force protection, helmets, uh, shin guards, uh, body uh, protection. Were they wearing those or were those in the vehicles? They were in the vehicles. They were in the vehicles. And those, my understanding was, were those weren't military vehicles that day. They were to be unmarked vehicles that were other government vehicles. Is that accurate? Yes, sir. They were GSA vehicles. Got it. And then there was no overhead for your folks uh, that were out that day. Uh, my understanding is there was a request from the mayor to not have um, – military vehicles that to not have helicopters up in the air that day in support. Would that have typically been something that you would have asked for in the past to be able to have some kind of overhead for a day like that? No, no sir. We, we would not have needed uh, helicopters or any kind of air support for, for a mission like that. Just right. simple traffic control. And the quick reaction force was, at, um, was available to support them if they needed it. But they are physically how far away as they, far as they, minutes? I don't have to say where, where they were exactly. About, about, 25 to, about 25 minutes away. So the quick reaction force was 25 minutes away. Even if they were, it was go, uh, we need you to be able to respond. It's 25 minutes on a good traffic situation to be able to get there, barring what's happening with the crowd. Well, we would have had a police escort. So okay. uh, the District of Columbia has military police and security forces. Both have marked police vehicles with uh, the emergency equipment, lights, sirens. Right. And just to clarify, that's 40 individuals on that quick reaction force. Is that yes, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Senator Langford.